Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm going to talk about cuted gates and circuit development. We can divide cuted gates into three categories. First, those that are direct generalizations of qubit gates. Second, those that are variations derived off qubit generalizations. And third, those gates that are really unique to cuted environments themselves. We'll see some examples spanning all three of these categories, and we'll start with those that are direct generalizations of qubit gates. So the generalization of the z-gate is really a phase gate. It applies phases which are roots of unity to each state. That is, it applies powers of the phase e to the 2 pi i over d, where d is the dimension of the cuted system. Note that when d equals 2, the phase becomes negative 1, and this reduces to the z-gate that we're familiar with in qubit systems. The generalization of the x-gate is really a shift gate. That is, when it when it's applied to a given state, it advances it to the next state, modulo d. Just to give an example, let's look at a Q-trid system. So d equals 3, there's three states, 0, 1, and 2. x applied to the 0 state gives you the 1 state. x applied to the 1 state gives the 2 state. And x applied to the 2 state cycles back to the 0 state. Note again that when d equals 2, this reduces to the not gate. The generalization of the Hadamard gate is the quantum Fourier transform. We saw this in class, just as a reminder, x and y here are whole numbers, d is the dimension, and again, when d equals 2, we could see that indeed this reduces back to the Hadamard gate. Now looking at gates that, in a cuted environment, really can manifest in different variations, let's look at the control shift gate. So the generalized form, similar to the c not gate, does addition, only it's modulo d instead of just modulo 2. Notice that the inverse, though, is not the same as the original gate. So it's a, so a non-Hermitian gate. Now, we actually have the same issue with the shift phase and quantum Fourier transform gates, but the reason why it's a bigger challenge here is because we would like to use these gates to construct other gates, like, for example, the swap gate. Uh, analogously to the way in which CNOT gates can be used to construct a swap gate. So in order to overcome this challenge, we can look at a variation. We'll call it the control shift tilde gate. The way this operates on both qubits is it would yield another state, minus x minus y, modulo d. Note that the inverse of this gate is indeed the same as the original gate. It is Hermitian, and we can actually construct a swap gate with three of these gates in the same manner in which three CNOT gates can be used to construct a swap gate in a qubit environment. Also know that, note that in order to make a control shift tilde gate, it, we would make it the same way analogously to the way in which a CNOT gate is made. You would have a control Z gate. Of course, here it would be the control generalized Z gate. But instead of having Hadamards on each side, you would have, a, you would have quantum Fourier transform gates on each side. Now looking at gates that really manifest only in a cuted environment. Let's look at the simplified Toffoli gate. So we see that this this can be interpreted by noting that the top two lines represent control qubits and the third line represents a target qtrit. This can be decomposed really into both qubit and qubit gates. We see the C not gate. We see what here really is a a CZ gate because it's a control knot with two Hadamards on each side. Again, these are all just qubit gates. But there's also a qubit gate, which is the XA. The way this operates is as follows. It flips between the 0 and 2 states, and it leaves the 1 state unchanged. Because this gate can be de decomposed into both qubit and qdit gates, it really is a hybrid gate. The multi-valued control gate really harnesses the power of a qubit environment. If you were to generalize a regular control unitary gate, what would you have? You would have a control qubit such that if it were in a particular uh, D state, one of D states, then it would apply a particular unitary operation to the target qubit. But if it were in any of the other D minus 1 states, it wouldn't do anything. Here, a different unitary operation is applied to the target qubit depending upon which of the D states the control qubit is in. So it really makes use of all the states, and you could see this by the matrix representation here. Now let's conclude by looking at an actual circuit using qubit gates, and we'll look at the Deutsch-Jauza algorithm. 
Note here, though, although this is, a, this is analogous to the circuit as it would be in a qubit system, but note that instead of having Hadamard gates, we have quantum Fourier transform gates. Also note that the phase that's kicked back, which is essential to the operation of the, of the circuit, is e to the minus 2 pi i f of x over d. Just to give an example of the power of, of a qubit system from such a fundamental circuit like this, the number of classical deterministic queries that would be required in order to determine whether the function is constant or balanced is d to the n minus 1 plus 1. But the number of queries that are required using this circuit is still just 1. Thus we see that the power of quantum computing is even more pronounced in QTED systems, and we see that QTED-based quantum computing delivers robust advantages, and it offers an exciting and compelling area of research. Thank you.